Well, it's that time of the year again. Time to get Christmas lights ready before the snow falls. But first, I'll check in on the existing lights from last year. They've been up there all summer because, you know, I'm lazy like that. And they all still work, which is a good sign. I have to get up there and uh, re-secure some of them, but that's not a big deal. But I am going to uh, pull them down and make a bit of an upgrade on them, just so that they're a little bit more visible from a distance. Let's check in on the control box too. It's also been sitting out here all summer. Well, for like a full 12 months actually. Not a drop of water inside there. Excellent. No reason to do anything there. I'm glad those Christmas lights survived their ordeal of being outside for a full 12 months, plus a little bit, through full-on Canadian winter, so down to minus 35-ish Celsius, and up to, I think we got over plus 30 Celsius in the summer, and heat, and rain, and everything else. But I think I'm going to do a little bit of an upgrade on them. So I've gone up on the ladder, and pulled them down off the roof so that I can work on them down here on the workbench rather than up there because that just seems janky and dangerous up there. So I've got them all down here. I've got all the clips with them so hopefully they can just go back in the same spot and they don't have to faff around with that up on the ladder because that was kind of awkward last year. Anyway, so the upgrade that I'm going to make on these, and I think I mentioned it earlier, is I printed off, uh, well, I spent some time learning CAD and then printed off these little guys that should just slip right on over there and glow uh, with the light so that you've got a traditional bulb shape rather than just a little point of, uh, point of light up on the side of the house. So as, to experiment with this, just as I was designing this, uh, obviously I wasn't going to go up and down on top of the house, but I do have some more of these lights uh, and this little board that I got from these guys uh, so I want to get this right because I gave it the wrong name in the in the previous video where I introduced this thing. This thing is officially called the Renard Plus ESP Wi-Fi Pixel Controller. Um, but the software that runs on the ESP itself is called Wi-Fi Pixel Stick. So just just wanted to get that straight to make sure that uh, if you're looking for this little board here, you can find it. It's an ESP8266-01. Um, it's a standard one right there. It's running uh, some software called ESP Pixel Stick, and it uh, and this board interfaces that with the uh, string of lights, uh, provides some voltage regulation and whatnot, makes it a whole uh, simple little uh, package. So five volts in there, you could put 12 volts in if you put a regulator, uh, the 12 volt regulator on there. Um, and then the three wires out to the string and the little ESP does the Wi-Fi and controls everything. So I'm just going to use that for testing here right on the bench. Uh, and as you can see, I've been experimenting with how to attach these things. This is heat shrink tubing designed for going around 18650s. So it's shrunk down quite a bit there and that seems to be holding mostly. This is just black electrical tape. But what I'm actually going to be using is this half inch heat shrink tubing that I got from Princess Auto. Obviously you get it from any local supplier, but this shrinks down two to one. It's 10 feet long. Not sure why they are labeling it in imperial measurements, but whatever. Um, and this stuff shrinks at uh, between 70 and 125 Celsius. The 3D printing filament melts at about 200 degrees, well, 180 or so. So I've got some uh, range to play in there so I can shrink that down without melting this. And I'm pretty sure it'll hold on. But I noticed that uh, these printed in the light gray PLA don't really... Oh, you can see a little bit of a glow in there, but not much. So I was delayed a little bit until I could get some translucent or transparent natural filament. And I think that shows up a lot better. I hope anyways. Then again, the black shrink around that base there. So I think in the, in the dark outside, that's going to show up pretty well. Certainly better than that standard gray. So after that uh, filament showed up, 
I spent some time printing a whole bunch of them. I've got 146 of them in there, and I think there's about 138 on my string that goes on the house. I hope I counted right. So I think if I do about a centimeter worth of heat shrink, which is two of those lines, um, I should be able to get a good shrink down on there, sort of uh, five millimeters above and below. So let's uh, give that a try. Let's put that over there, run that down over there, about like that, sure. I think that'll look pretty good, especially in the dark. I wonder if people will even be able to tell that it's not a traditional bulb if I've got these on a solid pattern. I think that's going to work. So I'll just repeat that about 138 times, but on the string that came in from outdoors, not on this one. noticed that I changed methods a couple of times and this seemed to be the smoothest way. I was using this uh, Northwest Shortline chopper for a while but with the groove underneath the blade this soft material kind of moved out of the way. This thing's not really made for that anyway. It's made more for chopping uh, model railroad lumber and rigid styrene and stuff like that. But it's really cool for that if you need to make a bunch of repeated cuts just set the stop and go but that wasn't cutting it for me, pardon the pun. So I ended up just with this. And I have gouged up this little area on my cutting mat here. So, oh, well, that's what it's for. And now, time consuming thing part two. Hmm, what is the easiest way to do that? Slide that over there, slide that on. Nice, tight fit and slide that up and then shrink 150, 130 sometimes. the last one yay so tomorrow I will uh, when it's light outside I will get up on the ladder and put these guys back up in the house and see how they look hmm 23 left and I made 147 of them my brain is fried I can't even do that math so I've got 124 lights in this string okay it also means I've got a bunch of these things left over. And I've got two strings or string and a half of these. So I might actually, now I'll probably have to print some more of these to finish that, but I might actually do that. That'll be about 75 or so. Um, I might put that on the tree in front of the house too. You never know. Anyway, I'll come back to you tomorrow. Uh, my tomorrow, your like. And there we go with it on the house. Um, I should have done this vi bit of video earlier, but uh, so be it. It's quite dark. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Let me just put a different uh, pattern on there. That's kind of cool. I mean, these are all the same patterns as last uh, the last time you saw these. I just think it looks better with the larger bulbs on it. Well, that was a fairly time-consuming project on my side. I'm not sure how exciting it was for you guys, but uh, maybe there's uh, something interesting in there for you. Uh, I'm going to put the 
STL for these bulb covers on, I don't know, I guess my uh, Google Drive, and I'll link that down below um, in case anybody has these kind of strings and wants to print something off like that. I don't know how useful that'll be, but uh, there you go. I may print a bunch more of these and uh, add, a, add another string to these things and put them up on the tree in front of the house. Pending, of course, wife approval, because all decorating projects must go through that approval process. Anyway, I um, hope you found something interesting in here, or at least I didn't waste too much of your time. Uh, comments, questions down below as usual. I'll talk to you later.